Good evening everyone and welcome to an abridged version of our Tropical Cyclone video update tonight the 22nd of April 2014. We've listened to some of the feedback that people have given us and the general public generally want a little bit shorter video and the weather enthusiasts would like a little bit more detail. So what we've done and what we will do for the remainder of the season which is only another couple of videos outside of tonight on Friday night's video we're going to have this abridged version which will only take four or five minutes for the general public and then we're going to have a state by state in-depth version and we want to see how that operates so we'd love to hear your feedback from these two different versions for tonight we're going to stick with an abridged version so we're going to stick with something in between so it's going to go somewhere between five and ten minutes long and we'll go into a little bit of detail and it'll be a bit of both worlds but on the Friday we're going to test out the very very short version for the public and then the longer weather enthusiast version all right let's get into it the last 24 hours, Tropical Cyclone Dylan has weakened out. It's now Category 1. It's about to weaken out into a tropical low. It's being sheared away dramatically. You can see some of the clouds streaming out here. Over the northern parts of Australia, we've got this low developing in the Northern Territory to the north of the Northern Territory, to the north basically of Darwin, uh, but well north of Darwin. So to the point where we're not seeing much effect on the mainland from it. We are seeing a big convergence area here right along the Gove coastline, the northeastern top end. As we head further to the east, we're starting to see signs of that low pressure system forming in the Solomon Islands, which is not good news for them because it's going to dump a lot of rain into places that are struggling to uh, come to terms with the rain event that they had a while back. We've also got a mid-level disturbance and an upper-level trough uh, pushing through, sorry, mid-level trough here pushing through the northern parts of Queensland. Now, that's going to result in the combination of that and a southeast stream are going to result in some moderate falls of rain along the central, tropical and north tropical coastline over the next three to four days, which will be, uh, which we should see some pretty decent falls out of. So if we take a look at the latest from Jack, we can see here Category 1 expected to just drop into a low here and some gales developing or some gales remaining on its southwestern quadrant, but that's it, and nowhere near Australia. If we look at the Western Australian Tropical Cyclone Outlook just issued, a low that is currently located in the northern Arafura Sea is expected to move southwards and then westwards over the coming days. Now, the Tropical Cyclone Outlook for the northern region has more info on that, but the chances of it becoming a tropical cyclone will increase uh, early next week. And from the Northern Territory, we're seeing that they expect that low to remain weak while moving slowly southwards and then egg entering the northern region later in the week. Its potential increases slightly as we head to the weekend, but increases a lot more as we head to early next week. And for the Coral Sea, we're going to see that low around the Solomon Islands pushing westwards. It is likely to develop a little bit, but in terms of cyclone potential, it exhibits a very low potential. The Navy is starting, uh, starting to investigate this system for further development, the one in the Northern Territory, and it does have a very, very weak low. You can see here on the visible imagery some very, very slight and weak rotation associated with it, uh, located around about 7 degrees south or 7 to 8 degrees south. When we look at the satellite-derived wind estimates, we can see the system only packing about 5 to 10 knots around its core, so very, very weak and not going to develop into a cyclone anytime soon. But in the future, as we said, as it heads towards the weekend, it'll push in a south and then west direction uh, through here, the, through the gap between the Northern Territory and East Timor, through the Timor Sea. Uh, and uh, once it does that, it will increase potential for formation into a cyclone. So we can see here on the UK Met model the system forming directly to the north of the Coburg Peninsula and going to push in a southerly direction, get very close to the coast and then jut violently out here to the west while intensifying under the influence of a mid to upper level ridge. Looking at the GFS model, very, very similar track to the UK Met. You can see here a southward, uh, a southward push and then a violent jut to the west under a developing mid-level ridge. And what we also see on the GFS that is consistent with the UK Met is an intensification of the system as it tracks here in the Timor Sea. Now, obviously, the intensification here is a lot stronger. It develops it into a Category 2 tropical cyclone. Also, the trajectory of the system pushing towards the North Kimberley is slightly different to the UK Met, which continues it moving a lot further to the west in the medium to longer term. 
Now if we turn our focus into the Solomon Islands, we can see the system there forming in the next few hours and then pushing to in a westerly direction but remaining very slow moving here. The 24th, 25th, 26th of April, it does nothing. It sort of sits in between the Solomons and PNG, dumping truckloads of rain here on the Solomon Islands, which is not good news again for them. And then we'll start to push in a more southerly direction as we head later into the month. Now remembering, of course, that Queensland is under no immediate threat from this system and possibly no threat at all from this system in the longer term because of the current the current projections of westerly winds. So we've got winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere that are going to act as a force field against a tropical cyclone to push west towards Queensland. So look, it's not going... If it does get further west, it won't get sort of west of about 150 at this stage. Look, the Coral Sea can change and we will keep an eye on it, but at this stage, that low will remain well off Australia's east coast and... Some of the models are suggesting it will form or at least deepen slightly as we head towards the end of the month. So folks, what does this mean for rainfall? Well, over the next 24 hours, we're going to see an increase in rainfall here across the central Queensland coast and the north tropical and Herbert Lalbertican coastline on that mid-level disturbance or upper level disturbance. We're also going to see the development of that low just a little bit up here in the far northern Arafura Sea. And we're also going to see that low starting to form here on the Solomons. But overall, a very, very active convergence zone continuing here for the northeastern parts of the top end. You can see here falls over 100 millimetres expected. Now, as we head to the next 24 hours, which is the Wednesday to the Thursday period, we're going to see a continuation of that convergence zone out here. Where we've got these moist northeasterly winds smashing into the coastline here, converging with southeasterly winds. And where that happens, we get a lot of rainfall. And once again, that's going to happen over the northeastern Arnhem Land district. That low we will push southwards and slowly deepen just a little bit now that doesn't mean it's going to be a cyclone so don't don't stress about it but it will deepen just a little bit and start to take a bit more shape as we head into thursday that low over the solomons will push west slowly but remaining very active uh, active the weather will be over the solomons also here on the queensland coast we're going to see an increase in rainfall there on thursday uh, wednesday night and into thursday i should say and we're going to see the continuation of that shearing of forces on ex-tropical cyclone Jack. As we head into Thursday and into Friday morning, we see a continuation of some fairly heavy shower activity along the central and northern coastlines of Queensland. We're going to continue to see that low pressure system in between the PNG and the Solomon Islands, continuing to dump a lot of rain in that area. This uh, moist onshore flow uh, will continue to uh, to start to push, sorry, not, not continue, but develop some showers further inland as well, um, just because of the depth of moisture associated with the easterly flow here. Now, over the northern territory, we see that that system will then start to push west, as all models are predicting, and we will also see it start to deepen, as all models are predicting. Now, how close it is to the coast will determine what effect it has on the coast. And at this stage, that's too early to tell. But our video update on Friday, our next video update will actually be Thursday now because we do have a low pressure system that will start to develop and push towards Australia. So it's important that we update you on that. So our next update will be Thursday and we'll talk a bit more about how that's going to deepen. We're going to continue to see active area here over the northeast and northern territory. And although it's, it is easing slightly, and by that stage, we might even start to see some shower activity pushing across from Tropical Cyclone Jack, the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Jack. It'll be indirectly associated with his remnants um, across Western Australia too. So the Gascoigne coastline might actually see some light to moderate falls of rain. As we look further afield from Saturday to next Tuesday, we're going to see continuation of this shower activity across central and northern Queensland coastline. We're going to see some of that very, very isolated shower activity pushing further to the west towards the central west district. Most of the uh, rain along the northeastern parts of the territory will start to ease, but that is very highly dependent on exactly where the position is of the associated trough and convergence zone associated with the low here or the cyclone by that stage. Now that will start to push west across the Timor Sea and be located to the north of the North Kimberley coastline. Now whether it hugs the coast or whether it pushes that, that's, that's the topic for another update later on in the week. But for now, suffice to say, it's expected to push south and then west across the uh, Timor Sea while slowly developing. 
All right, folks, so that's an abridged version. This is now gone for 10 minutes. Uh, we hope that we... We hope that some people are finding this a lot easier to, to watch than the 25-minute version. But, as I said, on the next update, which will be on the Friday I'm anticipating, uh, will be a big update in which we'll do this little short one, plus we'll do your state-by-state -state roundup that will take a lot longer. However, our next short video update will be on Thursday because of this tropical low near the Northern Territory. Thanks for watching tonight. And we'll talk again on Thursday night. Holy hell! Look how long. 64, 66. 66 miles an hour. Still going. 49. Look at that. Cowboys won. Cowboys don't play tonight, do they? Or Cowboys on Saturday night. Two metres in front. Complete wide out. <laughs> I love it. That's what cyclone chase is all about. That certainly is what Cyclone Chasing is all about. That's our latest update, our latest video from Oz, uh, from Oz Cyclone Chasers for Tropical Cyclone Ida, the cyclone we chased in Cooktown. So if you do get a moment, it does go for 11 minutes and it is some of the best nighttime footage we've managed to catch.